All right, what's up, guys? What's up? Let's welcome. What's up? What's up? Let's welcome Flex up, back Chris? back into the old school round table. <laughs> uh, you got it. You, you said, are you a home flex? Or you said you because I don't remember seeing that that background. Yeah, I'm home. Because you usually sit in the kitchen where the where the uh, fan looks. Yeah, like. I mean, this is in the kitchen or the living room where yeah, the pictures yeah. are. Yeah. How's everything? Good, man. Good. How about you guys? I'm, I'm not complaining. Chris is working on his uh, te technique here. He's got the microphone <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the spit catcher and all that stuff. <laughs> is somebody is upgrading when I was gone? Huh? He's upgrading. Yeah. Somebody was upgrading when I was gone. Milos, how you doing, man? Good. Good. I'm actually uh, glad to see Flex again. I see him at the uh, Honor Classic briefly. You look great. For a second. Yeah, look at the same face like back in the 90s when he competed. Did not I don't think so. Oh, I think in, between, so. In, in between sets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in between sets, don't be smiling. <laughs> yeah, definitely wasn't smiling. Yeah. Why, why? So, so I didn't even see him in, uh, in, in uh, Columbus. I didn't know you yeah. were there. I was at my booth, though. No time. Okay. Or not my booth, but I was at a mid forty uprising booth. Oh, the whole okay, time. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I signed with them. So. Yeah, they just sent me uh, sent me something from there. Uh, some of the samples. Yeah, yeah. Some it was some some gummies and. Yeah. yeah. Some shots or Gum whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The gummies are acquired taste. Uh, yeah, acquired the, the taste. taste the, the, the taste is yeah. You got to swallow that shit quick. Yeah, and, and the shots are too. It's an acquired taste. I just used the little capsules, the little black capsules, so it's it's no taste to it at all. Oh, okay. So you just swallow. Yeah, yeah. I, I chew. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I thought that I kind of, I kind of, I, I tried one and I, I, I kind of felt like um, um, maybe it's like an edible, you know. So I was chewing it. I, I was expecting something fruity, you know, <laughs> sugary. <laughs> It was like chewing. I was like, okay, that, that's different. So that's got to yeah, be, it's there's, there's something in there that's got to work. So, but I got to. Yeah, it but, works. I mean, it yeah, works. It's, yeah, it's, I got to. I got to tell you yeah. this, though. I took it, you know, and I, I, I took it. The first time I took it is before I went to bed. And I woke up the next morning and, and I didn't even feel my back. Yeah. You know, it I works. was like, you it know works. what? I almost forgot about it. So yesterday, yeah. yesterday I took one, I took one, one. For the first time, like during the day, so just I want to see, bro. This is man. It's better than smoking weed. No, I'm serious. Um, it it really works. I haven't had to take any of my opiates for like the last month almost. None. Yeah. None at all. Yeah. So it works. So, ready to go. I, I I had some. I got some from Breon. So I swear, mm. I I really felt like you know I, I I I was all of a sudden I was like, I'm ready to go do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to figure out your doses. Like, I was trying to figure out my doses for pain. Uh -huh. So I kept upscaling and upscaling. And when I got too high, it actually made me uh, sick. So I had to back off of it. That's the thing. You just got to figure out. But, I mean, it uses the same receptors that, that opiates does. So, you know, you can't use them at the same time. But, again, you know, for pain. And it also helps me sleep, you know what I mean? So I take it at night and I take it throughout the day. So... I remember because I, I, when I got it, I, I, I called Guy and I said, listen, Guy, how do I take this? I mean, you know, because, you know, you can't go by what you see on the label right. sometimes. You have to adjust. He said, listen, you know, just take two yeah. from the beginning. I took one yesterday, one, just one. Yeah. And even that one got me just before I went to the gym and I forgot about it 30 minutes later, 40 minutes later. I was like, man, where do I get this? Almost like I'm getting like the energy from somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. Is, is, is that what it is from just one? You're doing yeah, just yeah, so everybody's I'm, different. Huh? I'm a, I, I guess I'm a pussy. How many did you how many did you take for for for, for you to feel feel I sick? started off with just one, so I started off with 20 milligrams. Uh -huh. Then I kept going up and I got all the way up to uh, 120. Uh, and that took away my pain, but I accidentally took it on on no food. So it made me throw up. So I did it again when I ate. So it's just again, it's like it's almost like pre-workouts, right? You got to figure out your dosage, yeah. right, based on your receptors. And then you got to figure out, you know, do I take it on an empty stomach? It's going to hit harder. If I take it with food, it's not going to hit as hard. So it's a process. It's not, you know, 
it's not like a doctor telling you, even a doctor giving you opiates, he's not always right, right? Correct. Still might, might you sick. So yeah. everybody's different. So if that works with you, Dennis, then stick with it. That just means that, you know, your receptors are a little wide open yeah. than mine. Mine are all shut down from everything <laughs> I got to do. <laughs> Yeah, Milos, have you, oh, Milos, yeah. have you tried? Have you tried that? Edibles? Uh, I mean, no, no, uh, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. It's not. It's not THC edibles. No, we're, we're, not, we're talking about the yeah, uprising extract. about that yeah. extract. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, guy, I have to send you something. You have to try that because you might like it too. Well, listen. Uh, speaking of pain, you know the not only edi- pain, not only edible. pain. It's just I. I just yeah. felt like cause I'm, I don't take pain medicine, so it's not like I have to take pain medicine. I just f- realized when I woke up, I didn't feel my back. I wasn't as stiff as I was the prior. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. But I, I would never yeah. take your pain medicine because back in uh, two thousand something, I was kind of hooked on so you studied the Vicodin. And I, re- then I remember that. I remember that. Yes. Kind of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, and then you just have a excuse every day to take it and i just stopped dead cold this i would never ever take it again yeah and it's not it's not it's not just for pain so it's creatine right so that's that's all it is in a different form and delivery system it's what creatine creatine yeah creatine that's what it is yeah not creatine creatine oh cre- oh okay creatine. i was about to say i thought it was okay. yeah 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 that, that's <laughs> what it is <laughs> So Camilos, it might work for you because it, it uses the same opiates, the same receptors as the opiate. But it, the good thing about it is there's no OD in, right? There's no toxicity at no level. So, you know, the, and you're not going to get hooked on it. So it's not just for pain. I know some people take it for energy, but even, you know, I can't, I can't pick anyone. But even people who've taken uh, pain pills for just regular whatever for reason, recreation, or just to hang out, it still right. gives you that 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 feeling, that good feeling. So it's not just pain-wise. Like Dennis said, he got that almost, you know, almost kind of feeling that, uh, you know, either a, a opiate or smoking would give you. you yeah. know what I mean? So. Well, it's not. Well, when when I, when I when I smoke or take an edible, I get to where well, I do this. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go sleep. I don't care <laughs> if it's hybrid, sativa, indica. You give me whatever it is, I'm going to sleep. You yeah, know, right. and and I'm not complaining, but this kind of gave me yesterday. I felt like I mean, I went to the gym. Yeah, you should go to the gym. I, yeah. I like the energy it gives you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, yeah. I, I, I literally felt like an energy push from somewhere. Yeah. So I'm, uh, well, yeah, me, Milos, give me your address. I'll send you some. I'll give you for sure. Uh, or I'll meet with you. Forget but, about it. I'll meet with you sometime. Yeah, 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 tomorrow, Vegas, whatever you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you try to get it. The, the Vegas, the Vegas. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, UPS. But, uh, I, I do want to say this, <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, about a year ago, maybe, or a little bit more, uh, Flex, you had that uh, heartfelt message. You were so much in pain. Yeah. And yeah. then my, my smart ass answers like, okay, pain <laughs> makes you feel alive, right? Like, you know, appreciate it, cherish it, you know, regardless, right? You know, in a sense. Right. The, and then the Flex explained to me, it's not just any kind of pain. So while yeah. I do think that many of us uh, having those nagging pains and then we just reach out for some painkillers too not, fast, yeah. quick, you know, it's it's kind of different. So Flex, I apologize. I, I meant it in a good, encouraging way, but uh, it sounded like... Uh, yeah, yeah. I see. It didn't come across that way, Milos. Yeah. It didn't come across that way. I didn't take it that way, and you sent me a message privately. I, I didn't take it that way at all. Uh-huh. I um, I don't I don't compare other people's pain, right? You know, some people say, oh, your pain's worse than mine. Well, whoever's going through the worst pain, that is the worst pain for them. There, There is no yeah. more than that. So, yeah, my, I'm at the Richter scale with mine, but, you know, somebody might be dealing with something different. And to them, that's the worst that they've been into. So I, I understand that. And I think people who deal with, like, you know, chronic pain that, you know, really, you know, give you dark thoughts, they, they're aware. You just don't compare it. You know, you're in your own world. So, mm. So how do you feel now? Do you still have, like, this phantom pain? Oh, yeah. It, it's still so, I mean, nothing knocks it out. The creatine doesn't knock it out, not, not even Vicodin. Even when I'm in the hospital, I'm on all of the IV, uh, um, you know, opiates. It still doesn't knock it out. All those do is just they put me in like a, a mind state where I'm hallucinating so much. I don't really know what's going on. So like, say like you hear some background noise, Dennis, in your house or in the studio right now, it's background noise. So that's what my pain is. It's background noise, but I still uh, feel it. But no. I still, I mean, it, it brings me down to, 
like sevens and, and fives. I mean, I've seen yeah. I've seen flex and pain. I, I've seen it. I've seen it. He was. I remember it has nothing to do with it had nothing to do with his leg either. He was he was here in in Arizona, and uh, oh, he yeah. thought he thought it was yeah. very smart to go shoot and shoot a gun and shoot a gun that literally beat his ass. Yeah, yeah. The gun was that, it? Was, that was oh, it. Wasn't really the the gun. It was a shotgun, but it wasn't really that. You know, I had just had started my process of taking, I have to take blood thinners, unfortunately, and I have to take the worst blood thinner of all, which is uh, Wolfram. So it's so unstable. It's like, They're doing yes, yard work. Yesterday, I was watching the podcast. For the first time, I sat there and watched the whole podcast. And then uh, <laughs> me and my wife, we was <laughs> laughing about Chris. <laughs> what are you laughing about me for? <laughs> Chris had me rolling. And it, Chris, he didn't even say anything. He was just, when you sometimes look and you stare... You get that look. You look like yeah. I had to take a picture. Hold on, I was like, why, oh why, my God, why, man. why, why are you? <laughs> this guy. No, it's 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 not bad. It was just funny that again because you know you, you're looking and then you get I was that going like this. Yeah, no, no, you could, your eyes. Hold on. <laughs> I was so like, you pausing the damn thing, taking photos. No, like because you you was looking. You was staring for like two minutes. I think I, I I'm listening. What do you want me to do? I, yeah, I know you didn't do nothing wrong. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I, I already deleted the picture. I don't even have it anymore, so it wasn't good. Good. <laughs> you said good. It's probably still in deletes because you probably didn't double delete right away. Yeah, yeah. if you didn't double delete it, it's still there. Ah. <laughs> it's still there. Just go to your delete photos. It's still there. So you, should, you shouldn't be teaching that to people online. Maybe everybody knows that there's a double delete now. God Terrible. damn. Of course I know that. Of course I knew it. Oh, hey, okay. hey, but, hey. but not everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody. It's out People now. Listening. It's out now. People yeah. are listening to that. Yeah, <laughs> here it is. Hey, hey, man. Why, why are we on some downtime? <laughs> <laughs> You can't see it in the picture because it's. I was in the UK. I was in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris, you didn't get anything wrong. The UK, look. I went. I was in the UK, and I want to give a special shout out to Chris and Monica. Mm. They they listen every week, and I got a lot of guys. I mean, I mean, I, there's so many people. I'm like, I'm gonna give you guys a shout out because, man, everybody was coming up to me from the UK. Like, man, they love the show. They mm. love the show so much. Man, you you Milos and. And and Dennis, man, some and his one brother, he was like, "Man, you guys make my whole week." And I was like, "Damn, your <laughs> whole week!" But like, I don't know what type of week he be having, but he be like looking forward to listening to us. It's awesome to see that some people are literally looking forward to Sunday to get, to yeah. get the podcast on a Sunday. But all yeah, man, I, I can't remember all y'all names. I know yeah. I tried to. Huge but, shout out to all you guys, ma'am. You thank you yeah, for man. supporting the show. Now talking about England, Chris, you were the only one that was. You had yeah. boots on the ground. Yeah. So me, the, me, me and Milos we, uh, and, and Flex, I don't know if you watched the live, the live stream. We just watched it on, 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 on the computer or on the TV. Now, Hardy repeated another, another title, another Arnold Classic, the first Arnold Classic UK title. Now, here, here's my thing, what I saw. I mean, it's, and, and I got to say this, the live, stream, wanna... the live stream wasn't really great. Compared to the one in the U.S., this one wasn't as good, okay? So it was too dark. Everybody looked off in the live stream, you know, because you, you literally got to go back to pictures later and see pictures in high definition to see what they, what they look I don't know. Like. I don't know why I came across like that because I saw some photos, even if even some of the ones with Brian, it looked kind of dark <laughs> Yeah, or whatever. it was dark. But there, but there it did look good, but yeah. it, it was two, two different shows we saw. Yeah. I believe it. So now, Hardy got a last-minute visa coming in the day before. You know, Hardy was not at his best on Friday. Samson, that's my opinion, he was considerably better than he was in Columbus. Now, he was smaller. He wasn't the Samson when it comes to size. He was a little bit smaller. You could see it, especially in the legs and in the upper body. And uh, mm. But it was a, it was a package... Um, that was more competitive, I think, that day. I think it was closer, you know, but at the end, from what you see in, in the uh, score sheets, that it was, it was still, it was still a, a, a bigger gap between him and Hardy. Now, how close or how big of a gap did you see looking at it from front row? 
Well, the gap the gap was closed considerably, like like more than what I was expecting. But you know, you said you know Hadi coming in uh, with his almost you know twenty four hours before the show or whatever it was. It's not the best way to come in, mm-hmm. and you can it can make your condition suffer, and your look suffer. Um, but I, um, Samson did look like he was more confident. I think, you know, on the show before, uh, previously, we talked about how how he used his abs, like almost as a weapon towards this. Mm-hmm. The weird thing that I noticed, I'm sitting on the, I was sitting not in the middle, but on the right side. So I don't know how it was from the middle. It might've, it might've been a whole different show from the middle for the judges. But Samson looked a lot bigger on the right side of the stage than the left side of the stage. And when they switched them, I saw a big difference in Hadi, almost the same size, but he looked dwarfed at some times on the stage to me. And you could see the physical attributes of of Samson as comparison to the little squatty type body. I think that's what we always uh, uh, talked about, you know, in shows leading up to the shows, how he could expose in different ways uh, through the competition. But I just thought it was, it was one of the first shows I've seen that one side of the, the box and the other side of the box made a really big difference. Is is that the reason why Steve... the lighting? Huh? Yeah, he kept switching them, yeah. He yeah, kept yeah. switching them. I don't know why, but... And I, I remember, I heard Steve mention two times, you know, nobody stands in the box. Get on the right. other side of the box. Right. Yeah. Is it, it, he, that sounds like cut to the lighting then. That has to be a lighting problem. I don't know what was a, if it was a problem, but I'm just telling you, I noticed even his last spread from the back looked almost the same width as Hadi's last spread from the back. But then I didn't see the exact same when they switched them on the other side. Mm. Well, I, I, it, it didn't look like that on the live stream. So, you know. Yeah, it was weird, man. I had a, I had a, I had a moment. For but, like, but, but I remember, I remember talking, out. I remember talking to Milos and I said, what impressed me the most about Samson was his back double biceps. Oh, hamstrings and glutes for me. Hamstrings and glutes are on point for yeah, me. Back, I mean, his but, hamstrings are crazy. But he, he beat Hadi in the back of a bicep, for sure. I, I, Minos, what did I say? I think I almost oh. like Samson's back double biceps better than Hadi's. Absolutely. You did no? say it. Glute, and that, and but, not only that, not only that, uh, Dennis, for 60% of the show, I had Hadi, I had a... Uh, Samson winning in my mind. Mm. Mm. Which I never had that before. So, but he did fizzle out to me and started to sort of melt in that prejudging towards the end. And then I said, okay, you know, they probably was a hottie. But I left there thinking anyone could have had an argument, Samson won this show mm-hmm. or hottie won the show. And yeah. I threw that's what I left there with. That's the way Milo saw it too. Milo thought that you know, you know, Samson can, can, really say, Samson oh. can walk away with this win. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to give a flex priority as a guest, and then uh, I would chip in at the end. Yeah. Um. I. I. Um. You know, it's 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 sometimes difficult, right? Because we want to be brutally honest, and I feel that really helps the athlete if the athlete wants to advance. But then, you know, it seems like you're beating up on a person, but it's not that. It's just that you're giving your perspective. So my, my perspective, um, I thought uh, Sandstone looked uh, much better. Yeah, he wasn't as full, but I think his aesthetic, his lines came out. Um, I thought he was uh, probably uh, one of the closest conditions I've seen. I like the balance overall. Yeah, I wish he was a little bit fuller because we're so used to seeing that, just muscle throwing up on him and everything. But... Now we understand he's going to have to give up a little bit at, for condition, right? And it worked. I mean, like I said, uh, I was really looking because that's that's what I've always noticed is back and his hamstrings uh, just wasn't on point and his glutes. So I was really staring. And like you said, I, I thought he won uh, the rear double bicep. I thought that it was a, a even match uh, with the lat spread. But, you know, um, I think it's also Samson's is a good poser, but 
I seen in transitions, you know, when he wasn't even trying to flex his hamstring, I was like, I was like, oh, wow, you know, show that man, show that more. So, um, I, I honestly thought his whole entire balance, uh, won because it, it's almost like before you weren't awarded. If, if I use the words that you said, Chris short and squatty, right. And, and then you have someone who has the ideal uh, shape that we think about when we think about premier bodybuilding. But for them to be that close and then the, the, the superior, what I think superior body didn't win, it's like, okay, does that even matter anymore? And it, and it doesn't seem like that matters because we all been waiting for Samson to come in shape and he did, you know? Uh, and I think, like I said, his line showed a lot more. So I, I thought Samson edged it out, but I'm not. I'm not upset. Heidi looked amazing, especially Saturday. I was like, "Oh shit!" Mm-hmm. You know, he's peeling. I was like, "Wow!" wow. They went back to the drawing board and they did something. Well, they, <laughs> they, they probably did what they had planned on doing if they would have got there in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know? you got to have that <laughs> argument. What if? What if hey. Heidi would have got there at the same time that Samson yeah. and everybody else? Hey, but I, better would he possibly look? I, but I did notice that. Samson was better and Hadi was not as good. And Samson and Hadi's chest was a a lot smaller and less ripped. Yeah, it wasn't as shredded as like at the uh, uh, Olympia, you know, Arnold, right? But the leg, but even though they kept doing the same most muscular, uh if Samson had better abs, he, he I mean, obviously he's paying close attention to it, but if they popped a little bit more like Hadi's, because his chest was actually bigger than Hadi's in the show. But the last spray, I still got to say, he needs to do a vacuum. He's still not vacuuming that because that's where, if he would have did a vacuum in the last spread and he had a little bit thicker abs, he definitely would have won the show for sure. Okay, so yeah, his abs, his, his abs seemed a little bloated, right? A little like at the bottom for the tandem but, and that navel is. But, I but the, think, wait, wait, one more, one more, one more thing, and I, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, and we move and we mute you. Yeah, and then we move on. But the 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 three quarter front shot, he didn't have that little bubble thing popping out of his ab area. That was a lot flatter. Good, and I got to give him credit for that. Because I was just about to say the same thing. Because his abs. I know his, his, his lower abdomen is it sticks out just a little bit when he crunches yeah. too far over, and, uh, and it wasn't as bad this time. So he controlled it much better. Maybe it's because yeah. he lost some of the weight. Maybe because he wasn't as full in the stomach as he you, it was before. He's not as carved up. So maybe that helped him a little bit. Hmm. But it definitely showed that he's that he was trying to control it much better. Dennis, let me ask you a question. You know, a lot of people think just blowing your air out contracts your abs and they're not aware of that. It only it only contracts the upper part. You have to tilt and then pull in your tandem area to to, to cause your lower abs to contract. But just going that doesn't it just it only locks in the upper, you know, so I, I still I think it's a posing situation with I'm him. Being mindful of that. Yeah, yeah, of being mindful of that, of just pulling in from his tandem area. But what, but I don't what even is, know if he knows what tandem means, so I'll say like, navel. Flex, when you used to do it a three quarter he was like a master at engaging that oblique and serratus uh, with the ass. I learned from Robbie. That was Robbie's yeah. shot, right? Yeah, we did that. Yeah, uh, but I'm going to say, but Hottie was, I mean, uh, but Samson was not doing that. I don't understand what's going on with that. And Hottie's like really on it, like for sure. But Samson was not doing that. And Look, I, I, I got to say it, you know, and I'll, I'll be quiet because I know Milos haven't said anything yet, but I, I got to say it. <laughs> Hadi's a master poser, man. Yeah. That dude, he's a master poser. He's aware of his shots. Uh, he's confident in all his shots and he sells it, even if it's not a master Not as poser, good as he was. He sells it. He still sells it. <laughs> he sells it, he's man. Still he's still yeah, he's, 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 he's still around like, like, like he's he was eat. like that also, man. He <laughs> sold the shit out of that shot. <laughs> yeah, he sells it. Flex and Chris, when you talk about this lower abdomen, uh, last year when uh, uh, Samson won the Arnold Classic, Honey Rambo came to, to him and told him, you know, think of your belly button and pull it in. You know, mm-hmm. so he was giving him that kind of advice. Uh, Dennis James was a master of, you know, when he would do that. Uh, yeah, Hanson. but yeah, but not on stage. Like, so yeah. don't, <laughs> so don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't brag about, don't brag about that because I, I couldn't do it on stage. 
but anyway, it's just like, uh, okay, if you can make it for one second yeah. at any point of the day, you can make it for 10 or 20, That's which means you can master it. You know, so if it's there at any point, I think uh, uh, I agree with you, um, uh, Chris, that uh, Samsung controlled his abs way better than ever. It was still a little bit, you say, the lower abdomen here and there. Uh, I think probably he heard all of us uh, praising uh, Honey, who was normally kind of blo uh, boxy and blocky. At uh, Arnold, Ohio, he had that V-tapered vacuum for hours at a time. He could do this all day long, right? And I see a huge difference. This is the best Samsung I've ever seen, you know, so... I'm going to say, somebody said maybe version of in between, a little bit more size. Uh, he, is, he was leaner and uh, drier than he's ever been. And his uh, physique now popped. Everything that we always wanted to see, flex, uh, wheeler alike. <clears throat> uh, the shape, hashtag bodybuilding, I keep saying, right? Uh, I do think that finally, after he heard it was not even close, from people like Tyler Mannion or Steve Weinberger, that he realized it's not even close. He has to just dig deep. And he did. I mean, you see him in person. I I thought he, there was an argument for him to win. And I told uh, Dennis as well. Uh, if you think six, nine points, it's not even close. It's a damn close. <laughs> 11 judges. No, think about this. 11 judges. So three highs, three lows, they erased. It was not, it, it's nine, it, nine judges. It was only nine, not 11? Uh, no, it was not 11. Okay, then, then nine. So there is uh, uh, three judges uh, gave him a victory over nine. So, okay, uh, um, from three out I, of nine. I think one, he got, he, uh, I think one, one had to give him first place. Yeah, I mean, you erased the highs, so yeah. two ones, and there's still one there, which means at least three judges. Have two more judges uh, in your favor because that was close. You win the show. That's how close it is. And Hadi, I mean, whatever we say, Hadi is just master. He is a, the next level. I mentioned this, and I really mean it. He could have won every pro show he ever competed. I'm that gonna, good? I'm get $100, and I, I get $100 for every time you say it. Is, but I mean it. <laughs> Look, and you see, I, if I'm, I'm his and I believe, life, I believe you. I believe you. And I, I just put this in perspective because what he brings on the stage is something different. Oh, yeah, short, boxy, right? Nope. He's wide as can be and V-tapered. Tree truck legs, you know, separations, striations everywhere. Okay, he still doesn't have a back at the level of uh, uh, Derek Lansford. Uh, I did notice also that his super strided chest, there were... Also flat at Arnold Classic, Ohio, but they were strided. Now we're a little bit uh, less strided. You right. know, so there was not that super convincing look. But uh, again, some people they were there. I mean, uh, Chris, I'm glad that you said that you you saw Samson possibly taking. He was really yeah, but there dead. were there were also guys there that said it wasn't even close. Yeah, there yeah. was, there was, but, you know, but then. Uh, yeah, there was a few I don't, people. I don't, know if, I don't know if Middles can it say it. It was close, on. man. It was close, brother. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I, I saw him winning. And uh, to beat okay. Okay. Hadi Chopin. Okay, so I mean, now, what does that tell us? Now, Hadi comes in off. For Hadi, that was off, correct? <laughs> yeah. Right. Samson comes in much improved and still loses. What does that mean? That he's so far away from him because if Hadi comes back super peeled... <laughs> Because. Then the gap is even bigger. I think gap if you is can't if you can't beat, but listen, Hardy was off. For Hardy, he was off. I mean, I'm saying this, and I have all due respect, Hardy was still one of the most peeled guys on that stage. But for Hardy, he was off, and you get judged. You you and the judges they look at you as you know from what your last show. So now he was obviously off. So it was closer to Samson, but I highly doubt. That we're going to see that Hardy from UK again at the Olympia, I highly doubt that. So, what does that mean for Samson? How much better does he have to get in order to get close close enough to Hardy to beat him? I think if Samson brings in that fullness with that condition, it's a done deal. Mm. Yeah. Of, co of course, we, and we've been saying it's this. All order. We, that, that, we, we've been saying this. World. Yeah, we've been saying this for years. If he ever nails it, it's yeah. over. It's over. Yeah. 
you yeah. know? But who has, right? <laughs> We've been sending all these great physiques, yeah. you know, if they do their job. But you have Adi and you have uh, Derek, they're doing their job when these other bigger men mm. that should be dominating, not doing their job. And that's what's happening. It depends on the day. Chris, uh, Dennis. Give it Sunday, right? <laughs> yeah, Dennis did say that a back double biceps, he would give it to Samson, but then he says a lot spread, like how, like, uh, that Samson uh, didn't open up. The right side I, think, is I think he opened up much more than he did at the. Uh, well, yeah, but I, I, I didn't look at every single last spread he did that, that yeah. weekend. So um, but I, wa um, I watched yeah. the pre judging. I'm going off the pre judging that I watched. Um, and there, he, it was just like like he he, was, he wasn't opening up. I I I, could, I felt like there's more in there. It just didn't come out, you know. Maybe it was just I don't know. Maybe it was just that moment, you know. You know, things happen. I had I had times where I'm trying to open up, and I realized it in the video yeah. later. I said, Why didn't I open my shit up? I can open this up yeah. easy. It happens. And I think that's just more posing. I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe Milos can it's, say, but I don't I don't think Samson sends, spends that type of time in a posing room where he should be. I'm talking at least an hour where he's taking himself to where he's so fatigued that he can't even feel his muscles open because that's what happens on stage. And if Chris is what you're saying is true and Dennis, what you're saying is true, that's what happened. He got fatigued. He couldn't feel his muscles anymore. He thought it was open and it wasn't. Yeah. And the only way you can cure that is going in a posing room and taking yourself into you know dark waters to that point. Yeah. Well, he started to get, he started to get a lot of water coming onto his body toward the end of the prejudging. And uh, it was, that's when I think uh, he, he, he lost whatever they were looking for, hmm. for him. Yeah. Flex, Flex, I've been in a posing room in uh, Dragon's Lair with you and Andrew Jack when you were making him do like 20 seconds turns, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually Samson did with uh, his wife every morning, Three rounds of thirty seconds each, and and I was even telling you like three what? is not enough. What? Three is not enough. Each, I mean, gee, I mean, and that's a that's a more. I mean, you're gonna do more than that in every yeah. show. You have more than that. Yeah. You guys work with uh, Robbie Robinson, and uh, I work. I work with Robbie, and he said like, okay, you have to do the two hundred times the same shot. Yeah, two hundred yeah. times, right? Like yeah. Bruce said, uh, you know. I'm not afraid of the man that does 10,000 kicks. Uh, I'm afraid of the guy that does 10,000, yeah. you know. Uh, one kick, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I do think that, uh, listen, I always loved uh, Samson posing. Uh, this was like kind of next level, even his posing routine. But mandatory poses, I think he did the front light spread and back light spread better than at uh, Ohio. He did an ab shot considerably better. And that ab control, you know, like, uh, even though sometimes he would lose on the side, yeah, there is still like, oh, you're, wa you're watching for that. But I think that the flat, uh, stomach was much flatter and abs were much deeper at the just like normal moments when you don't supposed to pose. And that's when you, you got the judges, win the pose, be between the pose and have the abs constantly on. Uh, I think that it's major. Can he win the Olympia? He has a Mr. Olympia written all over him. I mean, we all know that. So Dennis, yeah, I said, Hardy, 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 yeah. And Hardy is the first favorite. And Hardy still has to come improved because Derek is going to come improved. Samson, I believe Andrew Jack, I mean, Labrade is taking a whole year. It's going to be very competitive. But uh, uh, I'm going to say this back in the day, they say, oh, uh, Dorian is the hardest working bodybuilder. And now they say, let's say Nick Walker or something. There's nobody that compares with the Hadi Chopin. You guys saw some of his footage and you saw him 10 weeks out of the show pretty much ready to step on the stage. I mean, that's Hadi Chopin for, for the world. Does that mean he's the hardest working bodybuilder just because he was, he was ready 10, uh, 10 weeks before a show? 
uh, uh, no, ten, ten weeks. Uh, uh, his workouts are next level to the point that I actually had to kind of uh, write on the Instagram, is this really necessary? He was doing super heavy legs. Why, why, heavy would, why would you write that on Instagram? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, I, oh. I, I decided not to, okay. but it was like, is this ne necessary? What's wrong? What's wrong with somebody giving everything in the gym? Because you know how every, you know how everybody is. Everybody says I give it hundred percent. No, you, yeah. no, you this lazy level. fuck. You give sixty percent, but you but, act like it's a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna tell you this because you asked the question. Uh, for Hadi, bodybuilding is life. Yeah. We were professional bodybuilders. That was our profession. That's his life. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. That's the guy that live, breathe, sleeps uh, bodybuilding. You can see this with every rep he does. Like Ronnie, like Ronnie was. Like Ronnie. His life. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the, the the welcome he got yesterday or today or this morning in Iran? Unbelievable. Unbelievable, huh? He is a a national hero for real. You know, it's good to see because at the end of the day, I mean, you know, you see all these people, there's not one single female under there. So it's all guys. And, uh, and but you see how can you imagine how Iran was on the map when he was on stage? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. He can, I don't know what it's called, president or whatever, but he could, uh, you know, he, he could run for president he, but, he, later on. He, well, I, I don't know if he wants to do that. But he no, can, I'm just he saying, can, he because can, he's so politically he can do powerful. Whatever, I think, yeah, he can do whatever he wants to do. I think so. And, yeah. and listen, and the money that he's making, the prize money he's making, goes a long way in Iran. I mean, he's. <laughs> I don't think he's doing this for the money. I don't think mm -hmm. he's doing this for exactly. the money. He would do it. If yeah, there was no I think he's just doing this just to prove a point. And I, you don't think they're shaking him down over there? Hey, hey bro, let me get a bit of that now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I, I can't speak on that. But the thing is, I don't. I I I, th I know he's at a point where he's not doing it for the money. He's mm. doing this for his legacy, and he's doing this to prove a point, and he's proving this that he can be the best. And he's he wants to win that title back, you know. Oh, it's, sure. it's never been done before. It was Jay did it. I think Jay was the only one that won the Olympia back. Or yeah. was there, was that someone else? No. Uh, Arnold. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But since then, there was nobody, and I think he. Did, yeah, but that, I don't think he, he didn't lose lot. to some. He didn't lose to somebody. He just won it. He just won it again. Oh. Yeah. But still, he came, yeah, came back and got it. But yeah, hot. It's just he's definitely fueled. There's something fueling him. Uh, that's just different. You can tell, you know, when he's on fire. He's almost like he's almost like at a boiling point, angry. You know, when he's on stage, you know, because yeah. it's so personal to him. But it shows out. Like I said, uh, the guy's a master poser, and he definitely know how to master the stage. It's almost like when he's on stage, he's around amateurs because he's just toiling with everyone and everybody's following him showing that he's a commander so that's interesting are we going to mention the rest of the guys in the show yeah, yeah, yeah. go yeah. ahead go ahead do you the one that was there Come i was on. the top five I, I had my own top five i'm, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you i'm asking you. i guess the top five all the way through so did you, I wanna... did you? Did you get that kid i did i did oh hold on hold on let me get the proof hold on damn yeah, right I'll, I'll listen to it I listened to the program. I was like, that's me. I did all five right. Let's see what Chris said. All five right. All right, Chris, let's go. Well, you got to check me out. Why you going to check you? My skirt. Hey, did it? He, he going to check your pedigree. He trying to pull up my skirt every time. Did I, did, I even, did I even write it down last week? I don't think that did. Yes, he did. I mean, maybe he didn't. No, I, I don't think I, I did. Dan Smith, I had um, I had John Forth. And I had Akeem third and down the list. I had it all right. Okay. Yeah. So Chris, I know you were there. Something came over to me. I think we all had the top five. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. Chris, how come Akeem didn't get the first call out? Hmm. Um, I don't think they noticed how dry he was uh, when he first came out. He didn't really show how dry he was. But when he started posing, they started to notice he was a lot drier than he ever. That's he the ever. second time that happened. Yeah. What does he got to do? What does he have to do? I mean, he you know, did, before a few years, he, did, he needed to be leaner. Did, you did, know, did, did. Uh, if it were me, I wouldn't try to display so much Christmas tree stuff because he has some visible damage in his back. I would just go into my last spread. I wouldn't even be pulling back and trying to show a Christmas tree because it's, 
it's it just showcases that the lats are a lot shorter than what you would want them to be in the back. Uh, back to a bicep is not as bad, but that's that's his only Achilles heel. Uh, a little bit more, <clears throat> he sound, he kind of don't put a lot of pressure in his chest from the front, so it gives him that elastical look through here. Um, so even when he hit that front most muscular, <clears throat> you would hope and get a lot more pop. If that was like how that you would see fully striated, fully, you know, abs and everything. So that's his only thing. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> the dryness in the legs and the, you know, the crab, all that stuff is great. Side chest, great side of his leg. Is, uh, but that's that's when that I thought that was the best look I ever seen of him in, in his lifetime. Was it so was it better than the, that year that he got sixth at the Olympia? Yeah, he was drier. Oh really? I, I think he's working with Chris. Yeah, Chris is working with him. I, I think top six Olympia, he was a little bit bigger, and not as dry. Eighty percent condition. This was like hundred percent. Hmm. I remember him being super dry at the Olympia. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. That was that was the that was the driest he's ever. Well, I don't know if it's if you compare it to the one now, but that was just yeah, that's freaky. You uh, see his legs. Yeah. The, holy shit! Yeah. It's crazy. John, John was good from the back. Uh, John could use some more ab thickness and a, a little bit more bells and whistles to the front. But they compared him closer to uh, Hadi, and I, I think he was proud of uh, his improvements. Um, you know, but uh, Akeem improved even more so. And then James was how James were. Mm. Well, Arnold did a great job again over there to put on a great show, great expo. I heard it was a success, you know, which brings us to a topic that I want to just bring up real briefly. Um, when, because there's a lot of talk out there right now and people saying that the, uh, you know, who's, who's the premier show in the world, you know? And, and, and someone asked me this question the other day, and I said, I had only one answer to this. I said, listen, who's the best bodybuilder in the world? Is that the one who wins the Arnold, or is that the one who wins the Olympia? Who's the best bodybuilder? Who's considered the number one bodybuilder in the world? Chris? Derek. Okay. Derek. So that, does that mean that that means... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, well, that's the title you want. The, yeah. uh, that's the title you want is the Olympia. That's right. What you want. Yeah, it, and, and listen, the Arnold Classic title is a huge title. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, everything, I love everything about the Arnold. The way they take care of the athletes, the way they run the shows, the way everything is on time. But it's still the number one show is still the Olympia, you know? And I know because Arnold, you know, I think the talk is just there because Arnold raised the prize money to, to 500000 for first I'm not, I'm not sure what's happening to the other categories, you know. So I, I, I took a little, I dived a little in and looked, you know, looked up what the difference is, you know, when it comes to prize money. And, tis, and the, the total prize money at the Arnold is 815000 If you compare this to the Olympia, where there's $1.6 million and 71000 You know, so it's almost double. I mean, it is double. Money. Yeah, one point six million seven hundred seventy-one thousand compared to eight hundred fifty thousand. Going into the categories, or and the, did it trickle down? Yeah. So, and, but how do you guys feel? How do you guys feel? I mean, I mean, the Olympia is the Olympia. We all got into the sport because we wanted to be on the Olympia stage. You know. This, so this I don't think I, I don't. Champion. Yeah, I don't you think know? it's possible to to take you know to the Arnold is a huge show. And to have a, an Arnold title is also something prestigious. I mean, uh, Flex got five or four? Four. 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 Dexter got five, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Chris got zero. You know, just as many as I can do. <laughs> we all got zero on Olympia, but, you know, I mean, yeah, that, and I want to say, you asked what do we think. I'll, I'll go ahead and go first because I know what I, I said. I would have thought, thought Arnold would have said something to me, like, fucking good job or... <laughs> uh, gave it a hell of a shot, or hey, you done this ten Chris, times? Chris, Chris, come to the Olympia. Come, come to Vegas. I'll let you hold mine. Six consecutive. That that one, yours is actually mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be out the door. I don't think you're asking. <laughs> hey, hey, you know I can't run no more. So that's really messed up. He's not uh, trying yeah. to shoot me. He can't oh, run. Yeah, he can't run, but he will shoot. 
<laughs> hey, all kind of hot ones in your back. But listen, as far as Olympia, uh, so, uh, yeah, I think what I said was misconstrued, you know, because athletes now, unlike before, I don't think they really care about the title. Um, they care about money. So by Arnold raising a prize money, that does make an argument that a lot of guys will jump into the Arnold now on that, that pretenses, but you know, which is the absolutely is back in our which is absolutely back in our fine. Time, you can't jump in because you got to get yeah. invited. Yeah, yeah, invited. But back in our time, the Olympia was was and still is a premier show, but it was also the highest paid show. So for me, being a money chaser, it was obviously I went that route. But you know, and and what I mean by I was misconstrued, I never said that you know the Olympia isn't a premier show. It is. It's obvious. Listen, I have four honor to, uh, titles. I never made no money off of it. Everybody I know, including Dexter, who has at least one Olympia title, tells me, listen, that Olympia title carries massive weight. You ain't never seen uh, an honor classic champion on the night show, right? But you always seen the Olympia. So that's obvious. So what pisses me off is when, you know, people take what I say and soundbite or try to go in and regurgitate what I said. So my point was, yes, the Arnold's is going to cause some havoc now that he raised that prize money. And it's not across the board. It's first place. Cats are going to jump in that show just because of that. But at the end of the day, the Olympia still is a premier show. And as far as anybody else taking or misconstruing what I said, I don't really give a damn. They can go and pound sand mm. all night long with no condom. <laughs> well, just raw dog. Man, yeah, also, really dog. Also, when I took third for the first time in the Olympia, that, man, I was like, that brought some tears that, man, it was just like a, man, I finally reached the pinnacle area where I wanted to, where I always thought I could be in one of the best in the world. And I didn't, I didn't care that I wasn't, you know, second, even though I thought I should have been second. I was, I didn't care. I knew that was coming. Because I had that I do. big, that was that coming. big, you want that, I always used to see Lee Haney with that big ass metal on his chest. <clears throat> and that uh, that you know with the Joe Eater symbol and yeah, but you got you, did, didn't you get the bronze medal though, the big one? Yeah, big yeah, old. I got, I got it three uh, uh, twice. I was no, got, back I back then, seen. Dennis, the bronze was small. Now it's big. Yeah, two back of them. Then they were small. Oh, okay. Got two of them. But you got that mm. that that other thing. You got, you got a, yeah, the patient. I was giving those out as I was leaving the damn. Uh, <laughs> Auditorium. Don't say that. A bunch of fans. Well, there's a bunch of fans. Well, guys. I can only speak for my. I can, was like, I can I only speak for my. Appreciate. I can only speak for myself. For me, it was when I started bodybuilding. I didn't think of competing, but when I did start competing, and then did, did Nabo first, and then my goal was to make it to the Olympia. Man, that was it. That was it. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 everything else was. You know, was just, just my second thought. First thing was make it to the Olympia, qualify. You know, and, and, mm. and, and the Arnold, you know, by stepping up means, you know, the prize money for first place is more than the Olympia now. But we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the Olympia has in store. Because, you know, we're going 60 years this year. It's anniversary year. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be, if they're stepping up with some things and, you yeah. know, there's going to be something special. I have, an, I have a feeling. I have a feeling. The Olympia started in 1965, right? Yeah. So is this a right. 60 how's it, year? How's it 60? Because I'm well, turning 59. In, in, in 59, I mean, in, in 2025, it would be 61. Really? Because yeah. how is that? Because I was born in 1965, and I'll be 59 this year. Uh, what, when was the Olympia? 68. Wasn't it 65? No, 65. Yeah. So I don't get that. I was born well, in 1965. Well, yeah, you, no, that's different. Because... It's different. You're born in 65, so you're one year old in 66. And the Olympia was the first time in 65, so it's already won. <laughs> preach, go on, preach now. What'd you say, Chris? Chris, hey, when you're born... If, not to the map. If, if, you, if you're born in 65, that doesn't mean when you, you turn... Get a, when you don't get it, a birthday. That, that, in 66, you turn one year old. You're just a month old. See, you're like... You, six months but you're born months. in 65, but in 66, you're one year old. So that's, that's old. why you're only 59. But the, Olymp the Olympia was held. So it's like having your, your first year birthday on your birthday. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <That laughs> you know, when you're young, I, hear, when you I hear what you're saying, Dennis. Milos. That mathematically don't add up. No, listen, <laughs> listen. 
if, if I Dude, okay, wait a minute. Okay, that, that, flex, that, that, flex, Chris, flex. Tell me this, uh, flex. Tell me yeah. this. How many Olympia did I do if I compete from two thousand and the last one is two thousand ten? How many Olympias? What? How many Olympias what? did I compete in when the first one was in two thousand and the last one was yeah. two thousand ten? Every year, how many Olympias? Ten. No, eleven. Ten. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I, I count on fingers. It's, this is, uh, it's what I, got people ten. at home. <laughs> people at home tell us. But bro, it's what I'm trying to explain to you. The Olympia was held I got in, 65, in 65. I got so you. the first one was 65. The first year. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I got you. So you considered the first year on that. Yeah, I got you. You're born today, but your first year, your first birthday is next year. Yeah, I yeah, got it. I got okay. it. Okay, so easy. Hey, man, it's, I'm it's just said like... When you started, you were just dreaming about making it to the Olympia, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to some flex. I've seen flex in 1989, California state champ. Uh, but I went mm -hmm. there and competed. He was light heavyweight. I was heavy. He smoked everybody. He was, he was like, in the show? Yeah, you know, overall. Yeah, I did. I was like 14 <laughs> heavyweights. No shit. I was there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. I, I competed every I didn't week. see you, man. What do you mean you didn't see me? I, was I didn't see you. I, saw you. <laughs> I didn't notice you. <laughs> That's the ultimate, you know, I mean, the ultimate respect. I really didn't notice yeah, you. But, uh, uh, I'm mentioning this because it's just posted. Mitsuro Kabi, you guys yeah, all yeah. remember? I remember Mitsuro. Mitsuro. This morning, uh, some pictures from my pro debut. Pro debut was 91 San Jose. And I literally went there. I, I knew I, I was just going to be a stage decoration. I'm not going to be a contender. Like, what the hell? But I qualified for Olympia in my first. I was top three. And imagine, now you're going there. I didn't even dream of the Olympia. And then I got to qualify for the first show. Jesus Christ. Flex, I know that you were trying to get the pro card for a few years, and you started getting frustrated to the point, I don't know if you were saying, okay, that USA was going to be your last try, or you were just Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I if you lost, you wouldn't be your last, but you still. It might have been. I was broke. No, Chris we, knows. Chris was paying for my food. We, but we were, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were all at our wits end, which you <laughs> Chris and Rico were paying for my food, you know, so they were tired of me. We we were uh, we were taking turns on the, the daily basis. So Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday was me, unless we went to go work at Roxbury. And then Flex uh, Rico had the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And then we took out. And they always made me feel like crap. They'd sit there and argue. You put more in. No, you put more in. And I'm just sitting there broke. Like, and the uh, tip. Damn. So and we look at that flex. You can't leave the tip. Damn. No. Okay, flex. This is a question that I have for you, Ben. I, and this is for the fans. Now, all of a sudden, you blew up. 1993 Arnold Classic. It's not your first victory, but your first Arnold. And from then on, yeah. it, it just skyrocketed. Flex Wheeler was everywhere. I mean, I, I can vouch for that because I realized this is where I started training just a year before, and magazines was all about Flex Wheeler. Now, if you can, and then you started making money. I mean, we, we're looking at the time back then in the late, yeah. early, early 90s. You made, you had some of the best contracts. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you, if, if you had given advice to any young pro or any upcoming pro, what is the most important advice you would give him when it comes to being a professional bodybuilder and making money? You know what the truth is? Um, because somewhere just in my heart, I didn't feel like I was going to capture the Olympia title. So for me, it was becoming a workhorse and doing as many shows as I could because I, un unlike most people, I, I got in a sport, like Chris was just eloquently saying, because I was broke, I had no money. And uh, so that's why I got into the sport because I started making money at it. So that was all. And, and but what I unfortunately now what I understand is I would have made more money if I would have just shut down and only target the Olympia because it brings so much money. Uh, not not the prize money, but that title afterwards. Yeah, it just pulls so much freaking weight. And I wasn't aware of that. I thought I could countered that by how many shows I competed in, by how many guest posing I did and all that stuff. I thought I could counter it, but I, I just couldn't. So my advice now is, my true advice, man, follow your heart, right? If you're about money, go get that money. If you're about titles, the best title to have is Olympia title. 
um, because it carries the most amount of weight. But at the end of the day, as an athlete and me being a pure athlete, do whatever drives you. That's the truth. Whatever's going to drive you, that's what you do. Because if you listen to somebody else's advice, you're not going to be fully into it. You're not going to be willing to go and hurt like we have to hurt uh, to win these shows and look our best. Okay. The only way you're going to do that is by your own advice. So I would say follow your heart no matter what it is, no matter okay. what it is. Even if a judge tell you, hey, you need this look, if that's not following your heart, you're going to be lost. Even if you achieve that, because I've talked to so many women who competed, who were told they had had a different look, and when they achieved that look and even won, yeah. they weren't happy when they looked in the mirror afterwards and what they had to look at. So at the end of the day, my true advice is follow your heart, period. But didn't you do shows that you didn't really want to do? Because I know I didn't want to do I did tons of shows I didn't want to do because I wanted to make money. But I was I was always told if I qualified for the Olympia, I qualified for the Arnold, I need to do those shows, you know, by Joe. So mm. I, I I mean, so I found myself on That's stage true. Alive. That's true. As a weeder athlete, we were told we had to do the Olympia. But it, it, the truth is, we didn't have to be told. I mean, we're going to. I mean, you got to remember, for us, we trained at Go's Gym Venice. Every Mr. Olympia was there at one time. So mm. we just felt that. That was the aura. That was the thing to do, you know. And we were the boys from Venice. We and it, and do you have any regrets? Is there anything that you wouldn't do if you could turn back the time? Yeah, like I said, if I could go back now, truthfully, I would shut down, right? I, you know, my, my, my 1993 was 1993, and I wouldn't have changed anything, right? It's still the best pro debut in the history of the sport. Whoever's going to break my record haven't even turned pro yet, right? I'm not ever worried about that record being broken. Now saying that, knowing now... Uh, that I didn't know then, I would have completely shut down and only target the Olympia. Um, because I feel if I, now I feel and I understand, if I would have just target the Olympia, I would have probably been able to exceed the best look that I ever did. But here I am competing two, three, four times around the world. And we're talking about hottie, you know, in 1993, I showed up in France the night of the show. I flew in the night of the show and had to compete. So we just do what we have to do. So anyway, Dennis, to answer your question, that's what I would have done different. Mm. I would have just shut down and target that Olympia title because now I understand just one title would have carried me so far, even now, with my honor classic type, uh, titles, truly, I haven't made no money off of it. No one has invited me or done anything for me for all four of my honor uh, titles. Same thing with Dexter. And I always talk to Dexter. He tells me point blank, dude, Arnold, I got five of them, but that Olympia, hey, I get paid differently because of that. Hmm. It's pretty much yeah. what I heard. You also, add zero. Well, you know, you, you add zero to your contracts once you win Mr. Olympia. Yeah. So the endorsement contract you have, and you would ask normally whatever, add yeah. zero with the Olympia title. Yeah if, yeah, if if I could have done just one show out the year, I think that would have did me well and helped my condition, my look, my size everything but i was doing nine ten shows a year so do you regret do you regret doing so many shows no i'm just saying if i wanted to if, if i would have i think i had a different outcome at the olympia because i knew when i if i went a certain you know energy into the arnold i knew it was going to suffer at the end of the year uh each time i did i put it together 99 <clears throat> pretty well but even even when Ronnie did that one Arnold in 2001, which I I I wish he would have done, I would have had that title, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think it showed him when he Chris went to the Olympia. Yeah, when he went to that Olympia, it, he didn't look as good as he wanted to look, and he was on the ropes, and he never did another Arnold after that. Mm -hmm. It, and he even admitted, he even admit that you almost had him or he thought you had him at that yeah, era. He even admit that. What? Who, 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 admits, who admits what? Kept, uh, uh, Ronnie did. He was on the ropes, man. He was on the ropes in Where? 2000. Yeah, but who was close? Olympia. Yeah, but that was, it was Jay was almost beating him. Nobody no. else. No, it was Chris and Ronnie. And, Chris and, almost got and, him. It was me and uh, De uh, De uh, Kevin. Me and Kevin yeah. almost got him that year. In 2000, yeah. oh, 2001? 
2002. Oh, okay. 2002. I was about to say 2001 was Jay, yeah. 2001, yeah. Arnold, 2002. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2002. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen. Yeah, that was, that was what? You know, but, but, but 20, I, I wouldn't 22 go back. 22 years ago. Yeah, I wouldn't go back and change anything because look at my outcome. You know, it's so hard to argue, right? What if? You know, what if? You know, picking one so, what if you tramped up? What if you, I mean, anything can happen. Now you didn't do no so at all. You know, and I regretted that um, in 94 when I set out of the Arnold. And then I end up, you know, getting into a car accident and going into the Olympia that year and getting, you know, the the floor wiped with me because uh, I couldn't achieve my shape. So you, it's so hard to say what if, yeah. right? Because what if everything, you know, what if everybody else, what if, what if there would have been 10 Ronnies? You know what I mean? Like Chris said, what if Ronnie didn't show Dennis, up? You know? I mean, Dennis, uh, Flex, what if you would have did that in North, North America that only three people showed up and one of them was, was <laughs> and we sit in the audience together looking at each other like, we could have won this show. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, Paul called timeout in the middle of the show. <laughs> timeout. I went like this and the exit stage right. And he was out. He's like, I got to take a break. <laughs> oh, my God. We sit in the audience like, God damn it, there ain't no damn timeout. Bodybuilding. <laughs> Milos, Milos, do you have any regrets? Anything that you would advise no, someone a, not to do? Okay. Uh, Flex and Chris just mentioned it. We had a weather contract, and a weather contract you have to try to qualify for Olympia, and then do the Olympia, and that means they had to do all these shows. And back then, you have to be top three in the show to qualify, yeah. and it took me forever, right? So I, I qualified. Listen, there's not too many people that qualified for ten consecutive years in the 1990s, because I qualify since '91, right, all the way to 2000. Uh, 10 times in a row. And I had to do it by competing, competing. And, and then you showed up there, but it's Chris is there. And Vince Taylor is there. And, uh, you know, Sonny Schmidt or somebody, right? So to make a top three, it was a hell of a accomplishment. It was not like nowadays, everybody's passing the shows. Yeah. Back then, like, I mean, Flax was doing Germany, France, uh, British, uh, I don't know. Wow, we're freaking globe trotting, right? Oh, Literally, yeah. we're globe trotters. So, uh, I, I wish I had like okay, I, I don't have that pressure because even uh, there was uh, what was it, two thousand one? I had the sh shoulder surgery, but I didn't tell either, right? And then Lynn Conkfred calls me, and you have to do the yeah. Niagara Falls yeah. Night of the Champions, and it was eight weeks away, and I have a injury, but th that was a time I could lose the contract. So now what do you do? Okay, you pretend everything is cool and, uh, you know, you try. But, hey, at this level, if you can do 100%, you know, you you have it coming. You, you're not going to place anywhere. Yeah. You, know, so. you know what, Milos? You make a really um, interesting point that I think we all forgot. And the younger generation, the newer generation had no idea of knowing. We had to compete. And, and when you have, like, guys that are competing multiple mm -hmm. times who are – first and second and third place, that means guys have to continue, keep going. That's not like now. It's, it's so different, you know. It's so different. And you remember uh, back when we used to do the Grand Prix, we would compete on Friday. Friday night, we fly to a whole different freaking uh, country, right, compete that Saturday, fly to a whole different country and spend a week in a whole different country and then compete again that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, flying to different countries every night. And here you have guys – you know, complaining or saying that, you know, they can't achieve a look because they had to fly in the night before. And we're freaking globe trotting on, on, on the day before still going to different uh, countries, you know. So it was, it was a lot more difficult back then, but it was normal, right? That was our norm. So it was just normal to do. We didn't think didn't nothing know, of it. But when we else. look at it now, we see, like, how difficult and how tough we really were to be able to do that. I mean, Milos, Chris, you guys competed sometimes – over 10 times in a year. You know, cats can't well, do that. They can't 13. freaking nail one year. Mm -hmm. How many, Chris? 12 and 13. And listen, uh, like you said, there was many times I didn't want to compete. I just had to. So when your state of mind is not there, it's like, shit, I'm going to lose my reader contract. So what do I do, <laughs> right? So then you have to pull it off, but your heart is not in it, and you go there and you force it. 
you know, this is probably back in the 90s that happened with many of us. I mean, Chris, okay, you were, you were winning and being there. Flex was always winning. <laughs> but imagine... Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, yeah. If if I put my uh, win to uh, loss ratio, I'm one, one and seventy one. <laughs> I won one out of seventy two. <laughs> I have to make a T-shirt, right? So I'm and you're still competing. But Milos, okay. you sure make them. But Milos, sure make see, this is and this is the beauty about this era. You didn't have to win the shows to be known worldwide. I knew about you, and you didn't win the shows, but you in the magazines, and this is what yeah. all that matters. Yeah, back then. yeah, Milos, you got more covers than you all had, of us put together, brother. Milos, I think so you brought more, on a different type of. No, I mean, it's it's just because just, they look like a man's fitness. It's just the way it is. <laughs> it's no, it's just the way it is. It's about you know who's in the magazines, who is out there. Being published, I mean, I mean, the promotion in Flex Magazine was the biggest magazine in the world. I think I don't even know is there still magazines today? And no, uh, no. I had to buy Flex Magazine for fourteen dollars. I remember, Damn. yeah, Damn. fourteen. And remember, that was the only way that we got publicity. That was the only way that you might get a contract yeah. by going into a show, and not just going into a show. You got to go into that show and win and be dominant. And huh. what a lot of guys don't understand is. Yeah, great. We had a Weeder contract, but if you didn't do or compete as well as Weeder thought you did, you got fired. You know what I mean? Or you got a huge pay cut. So it wasn't just pressure What's, having to compete. See, see, I it was pressure having to perform also right, at see, a high level. See, I don't remember that. I don't remember being forced or having to compete in order to lose my contract. And Chris, I, do you remember being forced? Chris, Chris, if you are if you're invited, you must compete. That's what he said. That's my weeder voice. What do you mean invited? If you if to if the, you're invited to the Arnold, you got to compete. If you if you oh so up, so it's yeah, not it's you got to so, compete. So you didn't have to put your name on the list to as as to get invited. So yeah. they just chose. No, back then, back then we were it were it was some of us were so premier. We just thought. I mean, we didn't even you know call up the Arnold Classic and say we want to compete. We just knew we were in the show. Yeah, I but, didn't even so, sign, but are we, are we, I didn't even sign some contracts and they, I said, hey, I'm doing the show. Yeah, I'm in it. Like, I, yeah, I, I, remember, I, Dennis. I, also, I, Dennis. Remember, they would force you to sign a contract way before the show. Yeah, you know what I mean. They'd force you when you're feeling good and off season, and all of a sudden you're like, God dang, I didn't yeah. sign a contract. And remember, Wayne Demilio would come after you about that crap. Yeah, for five grand. If you if you fail, there's a five five thousand penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Crazy. But, stuff. I remember that. But you know, it, it, it's so so. So they basically kind of talked you into doing the Arnold every year. But, but <clears throat> did that count for the smaller <laughs> shows too, the European shows? Well, well if you didn't qualify, because yeah, here's what I remember. <clears throat> I, they were fun with you then. Here's what I remember. You had to sign a contract, Dennis, for the uh, Grand Prix also. You had to sign a contract. I know, I know. Yeah, me too. Okay. But I remember okay. that, you know, back then, because a lot of people can't afford to go to Europe and pay for all that. We got inv invited from promoters yeah. that pay for our yeah. flights, you know, pay for our hotel. So we, we didn't come out of the pocket, you know. Yeah, Milos did. Milos did. <laughs> <laughs> really? Milos, you, you paid for your own flights? Yeah, many times. Oh. Yeah, many, many times. Damn, yeah. And listen, so think of Pavel Yablonitsky, for example, like, uh, you know. I love uh, him. Oh, I love man. him. Shout he out to Pavel. I love the him. Money. Yeah, he, he is phenomenal. I think he's so underrated. Sure. Yeah, he to save I agree. money all year so he can fly for Night of the Champions. He can maybe go to Niagara Falls and all that stuff. Imagine, I mean, uh, and even if you, you know, make a top three, you're going to, make less money that you invested. Mm. But that was the name of the game. They had to do it. Of course, Marcus Rulli originally, the Oleg Jure, I don't know, the, the old Europeans. I felt for them. And there was many times they showed up and they get just like one courtesy call. They don't even get really compared. And that's yep. what we used to have uh, with Van de Mille. I said, like, <clears throat> respect them enough. You know, they put all this in, in, a, in a year of preparation Okay, they're not gonna win, but give them a few comparisons so they they feel like they, yeah. they were fighting for it. Yeah. You know, if you I remember, uh, I remember, uh, um, Chris. You remember we used to compete so much, and we'd see the Europeans, and we know they had to pay, right? We know they had to pay, 
We know they were going to place out of the money. And remember, we would sit there and look at them and, be, and feel like crap because they didn't even get called out. You can just feel and see how they just was drained on stage. And, you know, that's not just that. You got to understand, they paid for all their food. They paid for their tanning, probably paid for their gym membership, definitely paid for their air flight, definitely paid for their hotel because they're not a draw, right? And they definitely paid for their food there. So even if you made 10 grand, which they made none, they're at a deficit. So it's interesting as a professional bodybuilder, as a professional, you think that you're going to make money, right? Because you're a professional. But a lot of those guys back then didn't make no money, man. They were out of money. They were going into shows, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars deficit. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I guess uh, speaking of older guys, I spoke to uh, not spoke to. Well, I DM'd with uh, France, Francis Benfado. Mm. Yeah, and he's uh, yeah. he's in South Africa, and he said he's having a. I told him we'd love to have him on the show, and uh, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see if he answered, but I asked for his email. He said that I said, you know, sometime I'm on the road. I'm on the I'm on the I'm on with Dennis him at three o'clock in the morning. So I get it. It's just, you know, we can get one day out of the uh one of these days would be great to have you on. We'd love to have you on. Talk uh, about classic physique. God about. dang. Yeah. That I, guy had a little bit more legs, he would have crushed everybody. I said beautiful physique though, man, from day one. Beautiful. Like, you like look at look at it, the way it looked when he posed. Even the way he posed, remember, Chris? Yeah. He was like, like, like this. He's like, damn, <laughs> how do you, how do you even do that? <laughs> man, he was so, so graceful. Man. Yeah, he was so good. Yeah. So he said yes. I, I would love to have him on the show. I know, dude. I know. I told him that we would, or you know, we I, all I was talk. I talked to Francis. That was. Uh, I'm just looking it up here. April, where I. Uh, Told him about the podcast and then uh, South Africa? and I don't know where he is. I mean, he's on Insta he's on me. he's on Instagram. I don't know where his phone is. So anyway, so he said sorry, I lost access to because I texted him the first time December twenty two. Yeah, and he replied to me uh, <laughs> in April this year. I mean, last year. Yeah. Yeah, he said he said sorry. Just seeing this, that's what he said to me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, lost access to IG account. My team just recovered. I don't know. He had oh. a team for his IG, so uh, so. <laughs> he's you in Australia for his last show, right? Two thousand six. Yeah. I was there too. You too. He yeah. looked crazy. Yeah. You look great. Yeah. You look uh, great. Much bigger than normally, and just same condition. The only thing that packed there affects his physique. Yeah, that, that yeah. was visible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some well, people, didn't, some people didn't. Tony yeah. Tony Freeman was able to come back and have a, a good yeah, career. Did. Yeah. Kevin did. Kevin him. Kevin too. Yeah. yeah. Kevin was probably probably Kevin is the most dominant force who had a effect uh, here who came back and done as well. That would be Kevin definitely. Mm. You could not even see it. Really. Yeah. 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 I hated him. I hated him. <laughs> Man, hated him on stage. Love him as a brother, but damn, I hate him. Remember Kevin, because we'd be ready to walk off stage. And Kevin would wait and act like he's walking off stage and you walk in. Go back on the basket there. would turn around and walk back on and start posing again. <laughs> he had that and I'm ready to pass out and I'll be like, you mother. Because <laughs> now everybody got to go back, right? <laughs> That's what Arnold was doing with Sergio, right? He's like, okay, let's and walk off stage. Thing, Sergio yeah. leaves and then he hits 10 more poses. Yeah. <laughs> Make him look well, like listen, Dennis, thank you so that. much. No, uh, for that. having me on the show, brother. I really appreciate it. It's great being with you guys. Um, there's so much amazing uh, camaraderie uh, between us. I, I don't think if we did a billion podcasts, could we tell all of our stories? I think mm-hmm. probably most of the stories probably can't go on. Some here. some stories uh, and the other stories yeah. we forgot. <laughs> some stories shouldn't be told. Yeah, we shouldn't. We shouldn't even. Yeah, and we forgot probably more than we remember. But thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Thanks for making the time. Flex, Chris, as always. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Thank right. you, man. Thank uh, you. We'll okay. see you. We'll see you guys next week. You too. Okay.